Inside Bowl coming your way in Minnesota and oh. Iowa State. The 21st category. annual Inside Bowl. Danny Lund is fired up to get ready. Paul Burmeister, Mike Mayock, and Stacey Dales with Gold the game. Golfers. starts right now. A 210-mile stretch of snow-covered Interstate 35 is normally all that separates the Iowa State Cyclones from the Minnesota Golden Gophers. But on New Year's Eve, the fans gladly left the winter weather behind and came to sun drenched Tempe, Arizona for the 2009 Inside Bowl. The 6-6 six six Minnesota Gophers taking on the 6-6 six six Iowa State Cyclones. Minnesota back for the third time in four years and back for the second season in a row, but still looking for that elusive first victory in the inside ball. And with that, we wish everyone a happy New Year's Eve and welcome you inside the broadcast booth here at Sun Devil Stadium alongside Mike Mayock. I'm Paul Burmeister. And Mike, for the second New Year's Eve in a row, here we are talking about a Minnesota team led by quarterback Adam Weber. And you know, Paul, he's a junior making his 38th start, yet he only completes 52% of his passes. So there's a disconnect there. Part of it is that they're the worst running team in the Big Ten. Part of it is that he lost his security blanket. Eric Decker, one of the top wide receivers in the game. There's a ton of pressure on this kid. He's played inconsistently against Michigan State. 400 yards passing. He puts 42 points on the board. But Paul, decision making. Tim Brewster told us the other day the goal: 70% completions, no turnovers. It is counterpoint. begins with number 33, Alexander Robinson. Make no mistake about it, this is a run-first football team at Iowa State. They're a zone-based team, inside zone, outside zone. Robinson has five 100-yard games. He's had over 1,000 yards on the season. He's a stick his foot in the ground, get downhill, quicker than fast running back that's tough and does not put the football on the ground. Now, what Minnesota wants to do is get them into third and five and challenge quarterback Austin Arnott. Arnott is not a consistent pocket presence. He does not throw the football consistently well. So if they can bring their pressure packages, their zone blitz packages, put the pressure on Austin Arnott, I really believe what Minnesota wants is to challenge him to beat this football team and not let him run the football. Minnesota led by third-year head coach Tim Brewster. The Cyclones led by Iowa native and first-year head coach there, Paul Rhodes, who is joined on the sidelines by the third member of our team, Stacy Dales. All right, thanks, Paul. Coach, on January the 12th, 2009, in your first address to your team, you told them, we're going to a bowl game, we will win a bowl game. So I ask you, what did you tell them in the locker room just before running out? It's time to fulfill our expectations. Time to fulfill. What concerns you about this Minnesota team? They, they're, they're a great physical matchup for us. They, they play physical football. They play smart football. They give us a lot of formations to worry about on defense. we got to be sound and simple with what we do to accomplish that. Coach, first bowl game since 05 for your school. What's the significance for this team? Well, there's, there's only a small group of players on this team that have ever been to a bowl game. Nobody on this football team as a player has ever won a bowl game. we got a chance to make a statement for our 2009 football team and lead the path for 2010 and beyond. All right, thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. I'm Paul. Stacy, the Cyclones and Gophers own the identical six and six record. However, only one team will ring in the new year with the winning Minnesota record. All day, baby. Let's go. Kick off. Minnesota all day. Cyclones just after the break. Welcome back to Sun Devil Stadium here in Tempe. The Minnesota Golden Gophers, Iowa State Cyclones, getting ready for kickoff here in the 2009 Inside Bowl. Tim Brewster's Gophers won the toss. They chose to defer. They will be kicking off to the Cyclones. On the other sideline, Paul Rhodes, the Ankeny native, in love with Iowa State University. So obvious you're around him for no longer than one minute, Mike. You know what this university, what this program means the coach Rhodes. I really believe he's the perfect fit for this program. He understands what football means to native Iowans. He understands what kind of kid he can recruit. And I really believe he's got a great base going forward for this program. Kicking off for the Gophers, number 37, Eric Ellistad. 
And deep for Iowa State, the Big 12 newcomer of the year on defense, a strong safety, David Sims. He is joined by number 19, Dubuque Hempstead graduate Josh Lenz. Minnesota put Nate Triplett, number 32, back on their kickoff team. It's the first time this year the senior linebacker's been on it. Expect him to be a big part of their coverage. Sims from zone five. Approaching the 25, gets just across. And that's where the Iron State Cyclones will begin. Led by the quarterback from Ames. Was a little cyclone. Now, he's an actual cyclone. Austin Arnott, the leading rusher in the Big 12 for quarterbacks. Very talented kid. We had a chance to sit down with him yesterday, Paul. And, and what impressed me was, was his size. When they run the football, he's a little bit more like a Tim Tebow than a quick, elusive quarterback. First and ten Cyclones from the 26-yard line. Alexander Robinson, he have over 1,000 yards on the season to his left. Gets the first carry and a hole off the right side. Positive start for the Cyclones in the running game with a gain of six. Joining Arnott in the backfield is Alexander Robinson. Already off to a good start. Wide receiver Marquise Hamilton, number 82, is the leading wideout for this team. Robinson in the Wildcat takes the snap himself. A first down as we lose one helmet, and the Cyclones gain the first first down of the game. Tackled by Simone Lawrence, outside linebacker for the Gophers after a gain of seven. Have to be extremely aware who's at quarterback or at Wildcat in this Iowa State offense. Minnesota Golden Gopher defense. The front seven, all seven starters. Our seniors, led by Lee Campbell, number 30, in the middle. The safeties will come up and hit you, number 27, Cal Ferret, and number 3, Kim Royston, first and 10, Iowa State, from the 39. Robinson in motion to the right. Looking to pass for the first time, fires outside to Jake Williams. The former walk-on from West Des Moines Valley approaches a first down tackle by the strong safety, Cal Ferret. Fake the bubble screen, which is a staple to this offense, and run the slant out of a three-by-one offensive set. Here comes the slant. Fake the screen. Nice play. Iowa State at the midfield strike. Two first downs in a row. Now the inside give the fake to Arnaud. Going to keep it himself across the 50, but not much further. That's a gain of two. Tackled by Nate Triplett. Lee Campbell, the middle linebacker and leading tackler, had a chance to make a play in the backfield. Arnaud made a miss. This is what Minnesota's defense wants, Paul. They want to get him in off schedule. Don't let him get four or five on first down. Get into that third and five plus category where they can bring their zone pressure. Four wide receivers to the left. No running back with Arnaud in the Iowa State backfield. That's a quad look, and they run the other way. Keeps it himself, showing patience across the 45-yard line. That's a gain of four. Tackle made by the defensive end, Cedric McKinley. Now that's classic Iowa State football. Four wide receivers to the field, come back weak side with quarterback. Look at that big tackle out here. Get a good block. 72 KO, Colecio Simile. And all of a sudden, Paul, they're back on schedule, third and three. Arnaud taking a long peek to the sideline. Has Robinson in the backfield next to him. Looking to pass. Fires outside. Another Iowa State first down. Jake Williams caught the first one to the left. Takes this one to the right. Tackle made by Kim Royston. An Iowa State gain of nine. And another Cyclone first down. And they're back on the ball quickly in a three-by-one. What they're trying to do is make the defense declare what their coverage is. If Arnaud wants the snap, like right there, he'll take it. Keeps it himself. More big yardage for the Iowa State running game. This time, a gain of eight. The tackle again by Simone Lawrence. That's the classic inside zone read play that's the basis of this offense. The quarterback reads the backside defensive end and either gives it to the running back or keeps it himself. Trips receivers to the left for Arnaud. First time the uh, yellow flags come out here this evening. Offsides, Iowa State. That's the word from the referee, Michael Batlin, on this evening, joining us from the Pac-10 Conference. 
really the first negative play for Iowa State. Exactly what you expect to see from them. Run-based offense and then short slants and in routes for Arnott. So far, Paul, they haven't been off schedule down in distance. Second down seven. Now the look back over to the sideline. Inside zone. Gives the inside to Alexander Robinson out to the 30-yard line. Short gain of two. Tackle by Unwachi, the defensive end for the Gophers. You hear people talk about inside and outside zone, and all it really means is simplified for the offensive line. They get on their zone track where effectively they're all stepping at a 45-degree angle in the same direction, and they take whatever opposite color crosses their face. Third and five this is the situation you said in the open, Mike, that the Minnesota defense wants to see Austin or not, see if he can make this happen. And you can see right now, they're look lined up. It's pressure. Boom, boom. And this guy might be doubling over the top. So they got what they want. Arnaud keeps it himself out close to a first down. They told us last night that he is our best short yardage carrier to tackle by the gopher linebacker, Nathan Triplett. Hey, he's 6'3", 224. And when we got done talking with the Paul, I said, look at the thighs on that guy. Big guy. I, mean, you would hate, I look at it like a safety. I would hate to tackle that guy. Fourth and short for Iowa State from the Minnesota 25. They're going for it. Inside give to Robinson. I don't think he got it. Nope. You can tell where the referees are going right now, where they're going to mark the football, and it's well short. Big hit by the Minnesota Gophers. Number three, Kim Royston, the transfer from Wisconsin, up to make the stop from his safety position, and Iowa State on the move. But the Gophers step up when they have to. We are still scoreless. We'll get our first look at the Golden Gopher offense after this. 0-0 in Tempe. Minnesota makes a big play on fourth and one, creating a down turnover. Watch what happens when the safety, Royster, adds into the run game. That's a great job on fourth and one, not only adding into the game, but making a great hit and bending the running back backwards. First and ten, Minnesota Weber joined by Daly and Eskridge. Eskridge gets the first carry, and a positive one it is. Across the 30-yard line. Oh, the Hosey get a good block there. A little wham block inside. Gain of eight for Eskridge, bringing up second down and two. Adam Weber is the Gophers' all-time leader in attempts, completions, and yards, making his 38th consecutive start here this evening. Iowa State defense was offside. Penalty declined. The gain of eight by Eskridge stands. Second down and two. A change of running back for Minnesota. Juwan Bennett in the game. It's a balanced set. Two tight ends. Two backs. You can go either way depending on what you see defensively. Weber keeps it himself. Looking play action and has a man wide open. The Sean McKnight bobbles it. Comes up with it. That's a gain of 41 for Minnesota. And we talked all week about how aggressive the safeties are in run coverage, but occasionally there's a real good play action fake, but the safeties bite. Too late coming back. Great completion to Dejon McKnight and a huge play by Minnesota. Now, that was Leonard Johnson on the cover. Sophomore cornerback for Iowa State. 41-yard gain for Minnesota. First and 10 on the Iowa State 25. Kevin Whaley off the left side finds very little. Already we've seen all three of the Minnesota running backs. Eskridge, Bennett, right there, number six. Whaley, that was a gain of two. Minnesota offense led by Adam Weber. Again, we'll see a trio of running backs. And the number one receiver on this team is actually the tight end. Nick Tauarnett, they would like to see him get ten catches or more on this day. Second down nine, Minnesota. Weber outside looking for that man, Tower Net. He had a chance there, Mike, to make his first catch. Didn't come up with it. He's a better football player than people think. Had 35 catches on the year. You put the Michigan State tape on where they put 42 points on the board. Tower Net had eight catches, two of which went for touchdowns, Paul. Third down and nine, Minnesota in the red zone or approaching the red zone. The Gopher offense not scored a touchdown in the last two games. 
Weber looking to pass. Has his man, McKnight. Good coverage by the Cyclones. Leonard Johnson making the tackle, keeping him well short of the first down. Interesting play call. Third and nine, you run a five-yard hitch. What you're trying to say is that my athlete is better than your athlete, and when he catches the football, he's going to break a tackle. Now, you can see right there Weber coming over and talking with his offensive coordinator. I'm not so sure that's where they wanted him to throw the football on third and nine. Eric Ellistad on to make the kick or attempt to make the kick. Has not missed from this distance this season, and he remains perfect. Good from 36 yards out. So each team has had a crack at it. One possession for the Cyclones, one for the Gophers. Big 41-yard pass leads to a field goal from Ellistat, and the Gophers lead 3-0. NFL game day morning gets you started every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. The first and the best pregame show. Four hours led by Spiro Dinas and our own Stacey Dales on the sidelines this evening. Enjoy the analysis of Marshall Falk, Steve Mariucci, Warren Sapp, and Michael Irvin. Game day morning kicking off at 9 a.m. Eastern. So the Gophers get a field goal from Ellistat. 36 yards out, they lead 3-0. A drive that was led by a 41-yard hookup from Weber to Dejon McKnight. Ellistat kicking off to Sims, has it on his own 10. Up a little bit across the 25-yard line. Now, Paul, let's take a little closer look at that big pass play that set up the field goal. Top of the screen right here during what people call quarters coverage. So as soon as this safety goes out so will the excuse me the tight end goes out so will the safety that's the corner Leonard Johnson trying to get over the top he's a little bit late good throw by the quarterback Weber that was the play that set up the field goal Iowa State had success on the first drive 10 plays 48 yards but they turned it over failed on a fourth down this is their second offensive chance Austin or not joined to his left and the tailback Alexander Robinson Look to the pass and has his tight end, Colin Franklin. Tackle made by Kyle Ferret, but that's a Minnesota gain of 21. Pardon me, Iowa State gain of 21 yards. I love the play action call on first down to their active group of tight ends. Gets underneath right there. Good throw. Excellent job by the very athletic Colin Franklin with 6-7. It's a great target. Again, Arnaud looking to the air and again finding his tight end, Colin Franklin. Tackle made by Kim Royston for the Gophers. That's a gain of six for Iowa State. And as you can see, they're not a big play offense where they've got a lot of great athletes on the edges, but they run the ball well, they play action, and then they lull you to sleep and hit you deep. Once again, Iowa State on the move, and again, we have a penalty, our second one or third one on the evening. Scott Houghton, the right tackle. Pushes Iowa State back into their own territory. Instead of second down four, they're facing second down and nine. Or not, glancing back to the offensive coordinator, Tom Herman, on the Cyclone sideline. Stevens, the center, changing the call up front. And they took too much time, I think, Paul. Once again, a penalty. And what happens when you've got to stay on schedule to be an effective offense for Paul Rhodes, this will kill him. Consecutive false start penalties, Houghton and Alvarez, and all of a sudden, Paul, you're in a down and distance situation that Iowa State is not comfortable with. Second down, 14. Back-to-back -back five yard penalties. This allows Minnesota safeties to play back further than they typically do. Arnaud with the shovel pass inside to Robinson. Minnesota has it snipped out, but nice job to stay on his feet. Avoided the tackle from Simone Lawrence, but could not get away from the safety. Kyle Ferret. A loss of six, so they go a loss of five. Loss of five to actually run the play and lose six. Yeah, this is just a little shovel pass inside. Simone Lawrence comes off the edge, makes a big hit there, doesn't wrap up. But 
obviously great hustle by the other safety, Kyle Therrett and Paul. What I love there was just how every level of the defense was involved. Kyle Therrett started every game the last two years, has 144 tackles coming into this one. Arnaud rolling to his right. Firing and intercepted. Kyle Therrett with a big series, has the tackle for a loss of six, then comes up with the INT. Really nice job by Lee Campbell undercutting a route, and I really believe it forced him to elevate the football. And we talked in the open about both quarterbacks and whether or not they make mistakes. The first mistake is made by Austin Arnaud, and Minnesota's up 3-0 early first quarter. Gophers on top, 3-0 here in the 2009 Inside Bowl. We're getting to that time of year. Draft time, which means path to the drafts at NFL Network. Beginning in early March, weeknight, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll break down the needs of every team and the best prospects at every position. Path to the draft beginning in March. Minnesota offense on for the second time this evening. First drive led to a field goal. See what's happened there, Paul. 54, the middle linebacker was sneaking up. They just changed defenses because Minnesota knew where they were coming from. This is Kevin Whaley cutting back. And the Iowa State defense led by the leading tackler, Jesse Smith, making the play. First turnover of the game. Look right here. That's middle linebacker Lee Campbell undercutting the route to Darius Darks, forcing the ball to be elevated, and the interception by Ferret. So, so far, Minnesota's defense, Paul stops him on a fourth and one in the red zone, comes up with a key interception of Arnaud, and it's up to the offense now to try and put together a drive. Adam Weber leading that offense for Minnesota. Empty backfield on second and ten. Cyclones bring four. Weber looking to his left and firing overshoots his running back, Duan Bennett. The back they believe is the best receiving threat out of the backfield. And Minnesota faces the dread, dreaded third and long, third and ten coming up. A yeah, nice job that time by Josh Raven, their Sam linebacker, undercutting the outcut. Obvious passing situation for Minnesota here, Mike. And one thing I would state on defense, they don't have a lot of confidence in that pass rush with four. No, they don't have enough athletes up front. They have no edge rushers with great ability. So they come off the edges. Watch out. Set guys coming from the secondary in a blitz package. Minnesota needs to get to the Iowa State 49 for a first down. Iowa State rushing four. Weber feeling the pressure from Neal. Flushes inside. Neal eventually catches him. Nate Freer is there. A host of their buddies also. Iowa State defense holds on third and ten. I have no problem with Weber making that decision as opposed to putting the football up in the air. Twist stun inside. Right there is Freer. That allows him to come to the outside. And what I like is he retraced his steps. He came back, got the quarterback along with Patrick Neal. Blake Howden back to punt for Minnesota. 42-yard average on the season. He put 22 punts inside the 20. This is David Sims retreating to his own seven. Brings it out across the 15 and approaches the 20. And that's where the Cyclones will get started. 4.49 left in the first quarter. Iowa State's third possession led by Austin Arnaud coming up after the break. Cyclone fans of all variety, Mike. All varieties happy to be here. Looks like one of my brothers. <laughs> Settles it down to about six different people. Austin Arnaud been a big part of the offense so far. The leading rusher, four carries for 18 yards through three possessions. Also five out of six, but the one incompletion is also an interception. This drive begins first and ten on the 21. Give inside to Robinson. Lawrence misses. Good, tough running. Counter there, Lee Campbell as well, also Kim Royston, but that is an Iowa State gain of five. And a missed tackle by Simone Lawrence, who had an opportunity to make a play, maybe for minus one or two. Back over the ball very quickly again. Trips wide receivers to Arnaud's right. Jake Williams, Darius Darks, and also the leading receiver, number 82, nearest to the sideline, is Marquise Hamilton. Another give inside. Alexander Robinson puts his head down. We do have a flag on the play. Tackle made for Minnesota by Nate Triplett. 
Yeah, I think that's going to be a hold. A little pin and pull by the offensive line. Holding. 84 offense. 10-yard penalty. Remain second down. You see, when you run that play ball, that outside zone, he's got to hold his block the longest. And typically, you'll see the tight end. If anybody gets called for holding on this, it's going to be the tight end. There he is right there. He's pinning, and there's the pull behind him. And pretty obvious call. Very difficult block to hold it for so long. Iowa State now four penalties for 25 yards. The Gophers haven't been penalized yet. And that gets you off schedule. In this whole first quarter now, they've been off schedule. Second down, 15 for Arnaud. Shotgun, empty backfield. Keep it himself. And going nowhere. A gain of one for Arnaud. The tackle made by Jawan Edwards. I think they want to attack the tackles, the defensive tackle. A little twist stump, but look what happens right there. That's Edwards coming from the inside tackle. He's the nose. Garrett Brown's their three technique defensive tackle. They ran a twist stunt, and he came clean. Arnaud already with five carries, gaining 19 yards, and he led all Big 12 quarterbacks in rushing this year with 485. Going to have to put it through the air this time, though. Third down and 14. Comes edge pressure. Arnaud stepping up and finding the leading receiver, Marquise Hamilton, but well short. A couple yards short of a first down. The tackle made by Royston. That's a gain of 12, but they needed 14. And what they're trying to do is get the football out of the quarterback's hands by bringing extra pressure. And they don't have a lot of great athletes up front, so they bring a safety and a linebacker from the front side, force the ball out of his hands. Michael Brantner back to punt. Six foot, 200 pound senior from Assumption High School and Bryant Allen, the young wide receiver deep for Minnesota. Brandner lifts it high. Allen, fair catch on his own 17 yard line. That's a punt of 43 by Brandner. The Gopher offense will be back at it. They lead 3 0, first quarter in Tempe. Minnesota still leading 3-0 here in the 2009 inside ball. Playbook coming two more times this week on NFL Network. Led by Sterling Sharp, Joe Theismann, and Brian Baldinger. Exclusive coaching tape as we look ahead to the final week of the regular season. Minnesota first and 10 from their own 19. Up the middle goes Eskridge and Jesse Smith, the leading tackler in the Big 12 there. Group of... Number 97 also there for Iowa State. Ruppelhammer. A nice. loss of one. Go ahead, Mike. Now, good defensive play. They understood the tendencies with two tight ends in the game. Double down. They pulled the left guard. Bunders. Iowa State came after it very, very aggressively. Eskridge out of the game. Number six, Kevin Whaley in to the left of Adam Weber. Jesse Smith, the middle linebacker, on the edge right now. Look at him moving around. Bagley still rushing only four and off to his right side. Weber dumping off to Kuznia. And Kuznia just one catch this season, now has two. A heck of a catch, keeping the one foot in bounds like you have to in college football. Maintaining possession. Goffin of three, bringing up third down and eight. We continue the rotation of running back number 22, Duon Bennett in. The receiver to the short side is number one, Brandon Green. Minnesota so far on third downs, 0 for 2 this evening. Stepping up and drops. Austin Albertus and the Cyclones defense steps up big. Looks like Weber had time early, didn't see anything he likes. By the time he flushed out of the pocket a bit, he was on his back. It's cover two look ball, and he had an opportunity with better protection to make a play over the middle, right in here. There's the dig cut, wide open in the middle, but he couldn't keep his eyes down the field because of the pressure by Albertus. Blake Howden forced to punt on fourth and 13. David Sims back deep for Iowa State. Fields in late, has a gap. 
I think he gave a fair catch. He had called for a fair catch and maybe forgot about it there. You can't do that, big boy. <laughs> Even if it hits the ground, you can't do that. NFL Total Access, Monday through Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. All the news and analysis of what happened to the NFL over the weekend and what happened on that day. 32 team cams inside access to the National Football League. You can see only on NFL Network. NFL Total Access, Monday through Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Paul, I was the worst punt returner in Boston College history. But you caught every one, right? I caught every one. I averaged six feet, two inches per return because I fake left, fake right, and then fall forward my height. Iowa State first and ten from their own 38. Two by two look. Two wide receivers each way. Wide guard center split. On a keeps it himself once again. Yeah. Making people miss. Pretty good effort there, tackled by number 21, Simone Lawrence, also the safety, Kyle Ferret. That's a gain of six. He's kind of sneaky athletic, Paul. Yes, I mean, he, is. he made two or three people miss there. You're talking about a quarterback that's 6'3", 224 pounds, and he's a little quicker than I thought. I mean, he's a little bit of a load, number one, but he's a better athlete than you want to give him credit for. Two tight ends in the game on second four. Derek Catlett to Arnaud's left and Colin Franklin to his right. Two wides and Austin Arnaud joined by Alexander Robinson. End of the quarter. That's going to be the end of the first quarter. Pretty good defense so far. The Gophers, the only team to put points on the board thanks to a field goal from Eric Elistad. The second quarter will begin with the Golden Gophers on top. Three to nothing. Welcome back to Tempe in the 2009 Inside Bowl. Minnesota leading Iowa State 3-0 after one. And Iowa State kind of controlled that first quarter, Mike. They outgained them 98-53, but four penalties on the offense really hurt them. Yeah, three, three false starts and a hold, and it gets them out of that schedule they need from a down-and-distance perspective, Paul. On schedule right now, second down and four. Are not giving to Robinson, showing patience, looking for that first down and fighting for it out close to the stripe. Good effort by the strong safety, Kyle Ferret. Now you run the zone scheme, Paul, and what you're trying to do is split people by alignment also. Look at the splits there between the center and the guard. The handoff. Really good leg drive. And we're going to get a measurement here. Offense up to this point for Iowa State been mostly about Austin Arnaud. Six out of seven, 53 yards. He does have the one interception. Also six carries for 25 yards. He just led his team to a Cyclone first down. It'll be first and 10 Iowa State from their own 48-yard line. Alexander Robinson picks up that first with a good effort. Right now, six carries for 24 yards for the man who went for over 1,000 on the season. One of four Big 12 running backs to do so. And that tight end is right there. You got to have an alert defensively because he might come in motion, crack on a ram block, or lead on a counter. There he goes. Play action. Play action inside, looking deep. Oh. Kyle Ferret has his second interception of the evening. You cannot just wind up and throw the football like that. You've got to see the safety there, and you can't put the football right in Kyle Ferret's hands. You've got everything going for you. There goes the corner blitz. He's going to the right guy, but he didn't see the safety come over top. So that's a young quarterback who hasn't had all that many snaps. You know, that's a great job by Ferret. He never saw the safety come over the top. Paul, he read the corner blitz. And he thought he had a man-on-man -man situation. And when he ran past the corner, his eyes lit up and he threw the football. But never saw Ferret come over top. And you've got to see him. That's a horrible decision and a bad throw. So the Minnesota Gophers take over. Adam Weber leading the offense. And Tal Arnett in short motion to the boundary. Fred Guerin up to make the stop of DeLeon Eskridge. That's a loss of one. And, and Minnesota wants to run the football, Paul. And the numbers show in the first quarter that they, they're struggling to do it right now. They're a big physical offensive line. And look at the hit right there by Garen. 
untouched through the hole. Garen now has six tackles for loss on the season. 6'1", 227-pound senior from Shepard, Texas. Now, Tim Brewster wants to come downhill and be physical, but this offensive line has got to do a better job of moving bodies. Kevin Whaley now in at running back for Minnesota. Pump fake, give inside to him. Jesse Smith not fooled. Interesting talking to him throughout the week, Mike, and uh, a former walk-on, now the leading tackler in the Big 12, and had second thoughts about even being here last spring. I put the tape on, and you know I do the NFL draft. This kid's a senior. Nobody talks about him. 128 tackles, and if you put the Nebraska tape on, he makes every play in that game. Look at the eyes on him. That is an intense competitor. He doesn't have great physical skills, but he shows up everywhere. Third and six, Minnesota over on third down situations, and they will be now 0 for 4 as Weber looks for number one, Brandon Green. You know what, Paul? I mean, I, I think Stacy Dale's had an opportunity to talk to number 54, Jesse Smith, and get feedback about why he wanted to quit last year with the third coaching change. And she's much better at that stuff than I am. You know, <laughs> I like your honesty. What do you have, Stacy? Mayock. Yeah, I. I <laughs> I did talk to, to Jesse Smith, uh, Mike, and, you know, he was really frustrated with the three different changes, and he basically walked into spring ball and said, I'm out, I'm done, coach. And the only reason he stayed, guys, was pure love and passion for the game of football, and uh, here they are in a bowl game, certainly what uh, he expected as the season progressed. Thank you, Stacy. David Sims returning the punt. We do have another penalty flag on the field. Normally in the area of an illegal block. Special teams play. It doesn't look good on tape on Monday when you when you on the return illegal block in the back number six on the return team ten yard penalty first down number six is Darius Darks the young wide receiver for Iowa State timeout on the field early in the second quarter Jesse Smith and the Cyclones trail Minnesota three nothing. 12.54 left in the second quarter. The Gophers on top of the Cyclones right now. 3-0 Iowa State offense back on the field facing first and 10, beginning first and 10 from their own 18-yard line. No reason to panic. You just have to play cleaner. Penalties and interceptions have killed them. Are not again to pass. Looking for Colin Franklin, incomplete. And right now, Mike, the Cyclones out gaining the Gophers, 102 to 57. However, five penalties and also two interceptions have killed him. Yeah, and I think Austin Arnott is a little bit out of his rhythm right now. Coach Rhodes knows it. I, I think they got to get back into their run scheme right now and just try and get real physical, try to beat on this front a little bit and then go play action on, on shorter yardage. Right but, now, Arnaud and Robinson, Mike, with six carries. The quarterback for 25 yards, Robinson has 24. Tight end motion, watch Whammer count. There it is. Give it inside to Robinson. Nice tackle by Ryan Collado. We saw him make a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage against Iowa. Blitzing, Mike. Yeah, I really believe they corner or safety blitz 10 to 12 times in that Iowa game. Here comes Collado. Does a nice job on the bounce. When that running back bounces, the corner cannot lose leverage. You've got to make sure you make that hit. Collado does a good job. He's an explosive, quick, tough kid. Third and seven, Iowa State right now. The Cyclones one for four in third down situations. Gopher showing blitz. Ring five. Zero coverage. Jake That's Williams with the catch, but well short of a first down. That's a gain of five. Now, that's the whole thing with overload blitzes and zone blitzes. That time, however, they went zero coverage. And they're trying to get the football out of the quarterback's hands quickly. So you're going to force quick routes because you're bringing five to six people inside. And as soon as you force the ball out of the quarterback's hand and make a short tackle, you force the punt. Brandner's kick to Brian Allen, well short. Going to be downed at the 42-yard line. Austin Arnaud getting things figured out. The Gopher offense coming back on the field. They still lead 3-0. 
Minnesota leads 3-0, but they're still looking to get that offense on track. Only one first down right now, Mike. They're also 0 for 4 on third down. Worst rushing team in the Big Ten, and I really believe they're trying to get downhill and establish a run game. So far, it's been futile. Running back right now behind Weber is number 22, Duon Bennett. Three steps for Weber, looking for Real the route. fade. And Real he's route. got him. Pretty good touch and also a good catch. Marquise Gray, the quarterback, more on him in a little bit. Right now, let's go to Stacy, who has more on the Cyclones. Well, Paul, I just talked about Jesse Smith before the season, possibly not wanting to play football anymore. Why did he stay after three coaching changes? Well, because Paul Rhodes came in and said, we need everybody in. It's all in. The triangle on the front right here. I've spoken with all the players. Smart, trust, and accountable. Paul Rhodes has changed the culture here. It's made a huge difference in the fun that these players are having, Paul. First down in 10, Minnesota. A couple quarterbacks hooking up on that one. This is Kevin Whaley. Nice tackle by Patrick Neal. And on that last pass play, Mike, we had quarterback Adam Weber throwing to quarterback Marquise Gray. And Gray is an incredibly talented and gifted athlete. He's six foot four, 225 pounds. He runs a wheel route. Look at it. A little comes up the sideline. They get a little rub. He runs out and up, runs away from the defensive back, Teron Benton. And we're talking about a six foot four and a half. 225 pound true freshman that's the backup quarterback that also is the wildcat and is also playing wide out split out wide to the right whaley the tailback getting the toss sweep picking his way a nice tackle there by the iowa state linebackers jesse smith coming in to help out fred garen that's a gain of three, Mike. Yeah, and you know, the, the story that, that Stacy just talked about with Paul Rhodes and, and the accountability and the buy-in, I, I really thought it was interesting with Jesse Smith. Can you imagine being a senior, your third head coach, and, and in spring football you kind of walk up to him and you go, you know what, coach, I don't feel like playing football anymore. It's a new scheme, a new system. I'm tired of it. I, I just got married. I don't want to play anymore. And Paul Rhodes, to his credit, got Jesse back out in the field. He's been one of the most impactful players in the league. Third and five, Weber swinging it out to Stoudemire. Does not get a first down. Nate Freer from his interior defensive line position out to make the stop. And, and Paul, that's a great call because that's what defensive football is all about. You make a guy miss on the perimeter, but you stop him from getting the first down because your interior guy hustles his tail off. Watch what happens on the wide receiver screen. Now you got a chance to make a play right here. The guy we talked about, he misses the tackle, but look at the hustle from the inside out. Nate Freer making a big play and now forcing Minnesota to make a decision on fourth and two. Fourth down and two, the tailback in the game is Dalian Eskridge, number 23. Looks like the Gophers are going to be forced to call a timeout. A big play right here. You're getting outplayed, but you're still up 3 nothing, and you got a chance now to put some more points on the board. Minnesota facing fourth and two. We're in a timeout. Gophers leading 3 nothing. We're back after this. Minnesota with a 3 nothing lead, facing fourth down and two from the Iowa State 29. Dalion Eskridge, the running back behind Weber. Got a chance to make a play if you're willing to try and go one-on-one. -on -one. There's nobody behind the press coverage. There it is. Wheel route. Looking for the fade to Hayo Carpenter. Incomplete Leonard Johnson on the coverage. Iowa State offense will take over. Paul, I love the call. I didn't like the execution. It was the same play they had where they hit the backup quarterback, Gray. This time, it's the same thing. It's a little rub route with an out and up. I think they had a shot to make a play. There's the rub. He comes right outside of him. Pretty good coverage right there, but you've got to throw the ball further outside. Leonard Johnson had good coverage. If he just throws the ball further to the outside, yeah, he got hit. Good job by Nate Frayer, but man, they had a chance to make a play there on fourth and two. Both defenses have now held on fourth down situations inside the opponent 30 yard line. So Austin Arnod and the Cyclones back out first and 10 from their own 29. Alexander Robinson inside, nothing going. Lee Campbell, the leading tackler for the Gophers, also Cedric McKinley, the defensive end there. 
gain of two yards, second down eight. You know, I really like that. This is the other middle linebacker I like, and these guys aren't showing up on a lot of NFL scouting reports, but Lee Campbell's the MVP of his defense, 112 tackles, blocked two kicks, and when you put the tape on, he's just a football player, and I don't really care what he runs a 40 in, he can play. 65 solo tackles, that's good for number one in the Big Ten for Lee Campbell. Gophers bringing the heat, Simone Lawrence and Lee Campbell on cue Mike in the backfield making a tackle for a loss of six. I was t told before the game by linebacker coach John Butler, the other two linebackers have accepted invites. Here comes Simone Lawrence. You got two of the three linebackers making the play right there. Simone Lawrence and Nate Treplin have accepted invites to the combine. This guy right here, all excited about making a play, has not been invited. Something tells me he's going to make an NFL team as a heck of a special teams player. Third down and 14. Iowa State right now one for five in third down situations. And way off schedule here. Press covered. Arnaud with time, flushing out, and nice play. The throw to Jake Williams. Very close to a first down, about a half yard past the mark. First down, Cyclones. That's a heck of a job by Arnaud. Now, I've been on him a little bit about decision. This is a robber coverage. One safety is going to sit in the middle. The other is going to go deep behind, and they try and steal a pass to the middle. He recognizes what it is, breaks the pocket, and comes late to Williams. Excellent job by Arnott athletically and with a good throw. Gain of 15 on third and 14. This is Robinson up the middle. Gain of one yard. Arnaud calming down a little bit, Mike, after a couple of early interceptions. Came into this game with two more touchdowns than interceptions on the season. For State right now, it's 13 TDs and 13 picks. Give him credit. Third and, and what was it? 14? Third and 14. A heck of a play. They tried to bait him into a throw, and he was smart enough to see it and then re-execute with athletic ability on him. Second down nine. Iowa State needs to get to the 50-yard line to move the chains. Play action moving to his left. And once again, Lee Campbell with a sack. <laughs> Lee Campbell's having fun. He's a senior. He loves the game of football. It's going to be obviously the last game he plays. And you can see Campbell coming and scraping right off the edge. What I like about that, Paul, no hesitation. Play action. He was disciplined enough to stay home. And when the quarterback broke the guard box, he flew up and made the play. Third down and 14 again for Iowa State a moment ago. They got 15 from Arnon to Williams in this situation. We'll see if they can do it again. Three wide receivers to one side, one to the back side. They're setting their pass protection right here. It looks like you might get somebody coming off the edge. Yep, here they come. That's Trey Simmons, the corner. Simone Lawrence giving chase, but Arnon picks up the first down. Across the midfield stride for the second time on this possession, Mike. They convert a third and 14. Looks like a different guy. They're out of schedule. He's had two interceptions. Now what's he do again? He makes a really intelligent decision. Numbers are against him. He ducks under the rush, runs away from Simone Lawrence, and his legs pick up a first down. It's time to give to Robinson another Iowa State first down, and this time Campbell has to make the tackle past the first down mark. First down Cyclones. And he made Kim Royston miss at a critical part of the hole. They're getting ready to go here now. They're already over the ball. They're in a hurry up tempo right now. But look at this pace. Are not keeping it himself. Across the 30 yard line. Tackle made by the safety. Kim Royston, the transfer in from Wisconsin, a gain of five. They're in what they call jet right now. It's their extreme hurry-up offense. They don't want to look at force the timeout. Look at them. They're all excited. That's a great job by Iowa State. Look at him. He's yelling at him. He's saying, yeah, we got you. Because we sped up the tempo. We converted two third and 14s. We got you on the run. You're not going to take your tackles out of the game. And we're going to make you use up a timeout. Cyclones on the move. We're back after this. Minnesota leading 3 nothing, but Iowa State on the move deep in Gopher territory. It's getting to be that time, Mike, your favorite week of the year, Under Armour Senior Bowl week, the game, January 30th. We come on the air on Monday the 25th. Coverage begins on game day at 4 p.m. Eastern on the 30th. The top 100 seniors in the nation will be there. We'll also be there the entire week. 
Second five, Arnaud faking the option, keeping it, throwing back to his tight end, Derek Catlett. Little stiff arm to Royston, another Iowa State first down, and a penalty flag likely for a face mask on top of it. Really nice job that time by Catlett playing a little cat and mouse game. Watch him. He's going to sit right here and act like he's blocking. It's called a slow block, and then he's going to release across the field. We'll play action fake. There he goes. They drop it off underneath. A very easy throw to make. And at the end of the play, there's the face mask. We'll add some additional yardage. And Iowa State ball has the tempo and the execution they've been looking for all game long. Austin Arnott coming alive. He has the Cyclones with first and goal from the nine-yard line. Two tight ends in the game. Inside give. Fakes the give, Arnaud keeps it himself, and that big body goes into the end zone. Cyclones lead 6-3. He talked, Mike, about what a strong runner he is. You certainly saw him there, running over the safety, Kim Royston. And that's a zone read play, and the player responsible with backside completely lost his discipline, which is why you had the one-on-one -on -one with the safety. Watch right here. He bears down on the offensive line, on the running back, kind of hangs Royston out to dry, but it's the defensive end that did not react correctly, and Arnod take, took advantage of it. Grant Mahoney from Linmar High School in Marion, Iowa, on to attempt the extra point. It is true. So Arnod passes the Cyclones down the field, runs into Gopher territory, and then finishes off. With a run into the end zone, Iowa State leads 7-3. There is Austin Arnott on the sidelines. Moments ago, Mike, he was in the end zone. Yeah, and Barrett Mowen, the defensive end, has got to secure a quarterback before he shuffles down the line of scrimmage. Now, he does a fairly good job of keeping his shoulders perpendicular, but he bites on the fake. That puts Royston in a bind, and all of a sudden you got a 225-pound quarterback one-on-one -on, -one on your safety on the one-yard line, and I think I know who's going to win that battle. Grant Mahoney kicking off for Iowa State. Deep for the Gophers. Number 11, Troy Stoudemire, and 20, Jay Thomas. Stoudemire from the one. Bang! Down he goes! Woo! Big hit by the Cyclone special teams. Are you kidding me? Sense any kind of momentum shift, Paul? Just a little bit. I want to see that again. That is wide receiver Joel Zetek making the tackle. How about this? Look at these guys come flying down the field. Hey, oh, I love that. Love the hitting. Zetek gets a piece of him at the end. Stoudemire is a little quick guy. Oh, man, are you kidding me? That is just absolutely beautiful. Number 39, Matt Morton with the initial hit. Schmidt Gal in there. I mean, that, that's firing up now. Everything going their way, Paul. Minnesota on the well, from their own 15-yard line. The tailback next to Weber. He is 23, Daly on Eskridge. You got to get a first down here. You got to get this thing back under control. Inside give to Eskridge. Pretty good job of dancing through the line. Out near first down, Patrick Neal, number 91, along with David Sims making the tackle. And right back at you because this is Iowa's favorite play, zone blocking. Okay, watch him get off the block and then push the linebacker, number 43, Fred Guerin, out of the way. The cut by the running back, Eskridge, and all of a sudden, bang, you pick up nine on first down. Second short, Weber looking to throw and was not, as they say, on the same page with the young receiver, Dejon McKnight, bringing up third down and less than a yard. And, you know, when we talked with offensive coordinator Jed Fish the other day, we talked about Weber and this young group of receivers. Remember, they lost one of the top wideouts in the country in Eric Decker, Paul, and now you've got a bunch of young guys. And Decker's almost like an assistant coach out there trying to help the wideouts. I was at practice the other day. He had the correct about three. Uh-oh, look who's at quarterback, Paul. Got Marquise Gray, the freshman. Under center for the first time. Fighting for that first down and getting it. 
Finds his way out of the pile there. The tackle made by number two, James Smith. It's not very often, Mike, you see a quarterback get three yards on a quarterback sneak. And they did that against Nebraska in a key situation where they actually brought him in motion, stopped him behind the center, and he took the snap and got a key first down against Nebraska. So what we're seeing so far is that he's become a big part of their offense, Paul, and a little bit at the quarterback position, but also at wide receiver. The Gophers now one for six. That was their first conversion on third down. First and ten for the 28. Weber to pass. And Weber with time until the defensive end, Christopher Lyle, drops him. He has been the most disruptive defensive lineman for Iowa State. And you saw why right there. Lyle's really their only defensive lineman that's got any kind of pass move ability. He's got a little shimmy to him. He can get up the field. He can make people miss. Real good job there just forcing the quarterback to bring the ball down and then making the hit. Team leader in sacks. He now has five. He also has 11 tackles for loss this season. Iowa State had only 14 sacks entering the game. Second 15 for Weber. This time across the middle, the tackle made by Jesse Smith, but not until Troy Stoudemire has a first down for Minnesota. And Stoudemire got inside the linebacker. Remember, they're not substituting safeties. Fred Garrett let him inside. Good job on the read by Weber, and he hit him coming underneath. That's a gain of 17. Weber to Stoudemire. He had 23 catches on the season. Juwan Bennett in the game on first down. Quickly, Weber looking to the outside. It has McKnight. He has another Minnesota first down. Tackle made by the strong safety, David Sims, on consecutive plays now, Mike. The Gophers have first downs. And the key there, Paul, was what shoulder he put it on for McKnight. The defensive back made an ill-advised attempt to try and get to the football. McKnight caught the football and turned up the field. Remember a few plays ago, he and McKnight were on different pages. Real good job that time. Minnesota now in Iowa State territory. Duan Bennett, the lone back, but again, Iowa State looking to pass. They bring the blitz. Whoa! What a catch by Stoudemire. Weber to Troy Stoudemire. Three plays in a row. Minnesota has picked up a first down. And that was zero coverage, meaning pure man-to-man, -man, no pre-safety help, bringing a blitz, and a real good job, number one, identifying it, and number two, taking advantage of it, and great finish by Stoudemire. Weber to Stoudemire, a gain of 14, another first and 10, and again to the air. Uh-oh. Tipped up into the air, looking for Brandon Green. That's the kind of ball that normally gets picked. Minnesota lucky to be facing second and 10. You're right, Paul, and, and they're up tempoing this thing themselves right now, right back at you. And what's happening is because you can't run the football, what happens? There's the ball way up in the air. You're right, usually that's intercepted. And two guys there, O'Donnell, who did he fight with? O'Donnell, the nickel, number 37. Leonard Johnson almost also came, in yeah, the play. Almost came up with the football. Another change of running back for Minnesota. Look who's in at the Wildcat ball. Kevin Whalen and the quarterback, Marquise Gray, is back in the shotgun. Keeps it himself and looking to pass. Nice patience and good accuracy to Deshaun McKnight. We do have a flag on the play. Something happened to the quarterback Weber who was split wide and trying to block on the ex it might be off offensive pass interference because I think that the quarterback Weber was blocking while the ball was in the air he was split way to the bottom well, maybe it's on Iowa State holding on the defense against an eligible receiver. That penalty will be declined. The play results in a first down. And Paul, I think the hold was on the quarterback, Weber, who was split wide. Marquise Gray, a nice job of buying some time and finding McKnight. He was only 5 for 13 on the season, but Tim Brewster told us we're going to give him some time to play quarterback and actually play the position in this game. First and 10 from the 20. Looking for the end zone and intercepted by James Smith. Talarnett with the tackle at the 21-yard line, but a big play by the Cyclone defense. Pardon me, that's the strong safety, David Sims, with the play. And the bottom line is the receiver fell on the cut. 
probably nowhere near as bad a throw as it looks on television because the wide receiver slid. I believe it was Stoudemire. He's looking to come in right there on the break. He falls down. Excellent play by David Sims. And if Stoudemire stays up, he's got a chance to make a play. There's the, and here comes the throw right inside. The slip. Good job by Sims. Good hands. Gonna get a penalty that brings this thing back a little bit. David Sims voted by the coaches the Big 12 newcomer of the year. 81 tackles, four interceptions, now five. Three forced fumbles. I'm, I'm telling you right now, James Smith and David Sims, their two safeties are tough guys. And I think Adam Weber knows that he had a chance on a couple plays, or he had a chance a couple times to make a play in that series. But Paul, you know it as a quarterback yourself. There's nothing you can do when the wide out fall break. Exactly. You just got to throw it and trust it. First and ten, Austin Arnott in the cyclone offense. One possession after they look good and scored that touchdown. Arnott keeping it himself and getting past Royston and Moen, the defense and for another good game. That's a pickup of six. You think Austin has something he saw Paul in that last series that he likes on that zone read? If Moen keeps shuffling down inside, Arnott will run outside him all day long. Second down four for the Cyclone offense. Late substitution. Jawan Edwards. Play action to Robinson and the pass to his tight end for a first down. That's Colin Franklin, number 88, picking up the first down. Coming up at halftime, back to Los Angeles. Alex Flanagan, your host. Take a good look at the Vikings, who uh, seem to be struggling at the wrong time. Take a look at the top 10 NFL players of the decade. And Michael Irvin will sit down with Wade Phillips. Coming up at halftime, here the 2009 Inside Bowl. First down and 10. Arnaud stepping up, finding Darius Darks close to the 40-yard line. Tackled by the safety, Kyle Ferrick. Gain of 18 for Iowa State. Arnaud's feeling it. Struggled in the first quarter. All the penalties, the two interceptions. Look at this. They can't get people off the field. In time. He's going to snap it. Where well, they got him. Oh, yeah. Paul, this Iowa State up-tempo offense now has got exactly what they want Time's because... Down. Timeout. Minnesota. That's their third and final charge timeout of the half. So they forced... 30 second charge timeout. Forced Minnesota again to burn a timeout. And what's happening, Paul, is Minnesota likes to rotate defensive linemen especially. They get six, seven guys rotating in all the time. But because of the hurry-up offense, it's keeping them on the sidelines. And the big fellas, Paul, they get tired. You start chasing Austin or not around at 320 pounds, you want a break. You know, this is crazy here. I mean, take a look at what's happening. There's guys, well, there goes one guy off over there, another guy off here. Who's coming? I, I can't run anymore. I'm gassed. Ball timeout, coach. As an offense, you have very few chances, Mike, to, to dictate to the defense, but running a hurry-up offense is one of those few chances you have. Right now, you'd have to say advantage Iowa State. Play action. Are not going to keep it himself. Out close to the 40-yard line, but not much going there. A little fight down there. Cedric McKinley on the tackle. I think Lee Campbell and uh, Alex Alvarez were getting into it. Calm down, Lee. 38 seconds left. Timeout called by Iowa State. Look at them. They're all having fun. Look at that. I love this. Kids competing. They're still talking to each other, but I think in a good way now. Arnaud right now, 11 out of 14. Good percentage. However, he does have the two interceptions. He's put those behind him and played strong here recently. He also has 13 carries for 55 yards and the one touchdown. It's pretty intense guy there, Paul Rhodes, and it got intense on the field at the very end of the play. You can see some late hits happening. This is where people get upset, and then right there, <laughs> Reggie Stevens jumped on top, a late hit. Did he, what did he do? Did he kick him? 
And Campbell's insinuating there was some acting going on right there, Mike. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. Stevens jumped in. He pushed back. I think the referees did a wonderful job ignoring the whole thing and just splitting them up and saying, let's continue to play, fellas. Second down eight for Iowa State. Austin Arnott has completed five passes in a row, looking again to the air. Nice throw and catch to Darius Darks, another Iowa State first down. Make that six completions in a row for Arnott. Yeah, and that was key because you got a wide receiver effectively on a linebacker, Simone Lawrence, because the corner and safety were run off in quarters coverage. And here we go, hurry up again. Gain of 20, 31 seconds left. Iowa State now in the 38. You got a tired defensive line right now. You can't substitute. Minnesota continuing to rush forward, giving Arnaud time, looking to the end zone and looking for Jake Williams. Touchdown, Cyclones. And there was contact on about the three yard line. Both the safety and the wide receiver stopped. And the safety, Barrett, fell down. And Jake Williams, the hero of the Nebraska game, located the football, made the play. Paul, that was a jump ball. That was really good coverage. And the end. Keep your eye on Theron right here, 27. He sees the play. He's with him. There's contact on the six-yard line. Excellent job by Williams keeping his concentration. Ultimately a touchdown. Grant Mahoney looking to make it two for two on extra points this evening. He does just that. And the Cyclones after trailing three to nothing after one. And put on back-to-back -back touchdowns. They lead 14 to three. I've been in this position before at safety, and I, I feel badly for Theron because he did everything right except at the end of the play. And this is just a Hail Mary at the end of the half. There's the contact, no call, and the concentration by Williams is what the key to the football play was. You can see right there the initiation of the contact. The referee had his eye on it the whole time. He deems it incidental contact, and it's a touchdown. So Iowa State, Mike, has scored two touchdowns in the last four minutes and seven seconds. Arnott has seven completions in a row. He's also carried the football 13 times for 55 yards and one touchdown. 217 yards, Paul, and, and he looks like a completely different guy in the second quarter, doesn't he? That's what you expect from a guy who's, I believe he started 22 games. You get off to a bad start. What do you say? you got to have a short memory at quarterback. That's something you develop, and he obviously has it here tonight. Grant Mahoney to kick. Stoudemire to return for the Gophers. Out to the 20, and the Cyclone special team once again stepping up. 37 is Michael O'Connell, the safety from Iowa City, Regina. 17 seconds left in the half. This, this whole second quarter from a tempo, momentum, intensity standpoint has gone to Ohio, Iowa State. Remember, Paul, first quarter they had five penalties. They stopped themselves with two interceptions, and now kickoff coverage, defense, offense, it's all going their way. Tim Brewster's got to get this ship steadied right now, get him in the locker room, and come back out here because it's a 14-3 game, and they're really in it. 17 seconds left. Cyclone scoring on back-to-back -back possessions, just a little... Delayed draw up the middle to Eskridge, and that's how the first half will end. Iowa State erased that three to nothing deficit, made it seven to three, and moments ago from Arnaud to Jake Williams went ahead 14 to three, and that's how we take it into the halftime locker room. Give Arnaud a ton of credit coming back the way he did. Give Jake Williams credit for not giving up on that Hail Mary pass. Let's go to the sidelines and say hello to Stacey Dales. Coach, a huge tempo shift, a huge momentum shift. What do you tell your players heading to the locker room? Well, again, we had an opportunity to make a big play down here, fell down on the route, and then our guy fell down, and, and they got a big play. So 30 minutes, we got you know, to go in the locker room, regroup. we got 30 minutes to play. Coach, you've had a couple interceptions, and you just mentioned it. How do you get this offense to capitalize on the turnovers? Well, we had a nice drive right there at the end. And what we've got to do is sustain that thing, knock it in the end zone, score touchdowns. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Paul. Paul. 
Stacey Dales, Coach Brewster, thank you very much. We are at halftime of the 2009 Inside Bowl. Iowa State leading Minnesota 14-3. Let's go to Los Angeles Center NFL Total Access Studios for Alex Flanagan. One half of play in the 2009 Inside Bowl in Tempe, Arizona. The battle of Big Ten and Big 12 going the way of the Cyclones. They come on late offensively in the second quarter. They lead 14-3 right now. And right now the MVP would have to be Arnaud, but he did not get off to a good start, Mike. Two interceptions to Kyle Ferrett. Yeah, this was the second one. Five penalties, two interceptions in the first quarter. Completely different guy in the second quarter. The zone read play, defensive end. Does a poor job. Arnaud runs over the safety, Royston. And then at the end of the half, a Hail Mary. The safety, Ferret, falls down. Jake Williams with the big catch. And ball, 14-3, Cyclones. Right now, Arnaud, 13 completions. Also 13 rushes for 216 yards of total offense. Iowa State really coming on late to dominate the second quarter. Jake Williams, the leading receiver, five catches for 78 yards. And, and Paul, the key stat to me is Minnesota ran the ball 14 times for a total of 19 yards. They're coming out of the locker room. They get the football first. I really don't think they're going to be able to run the ball. This is going to become the Adam Weber second half. He's either going to put this team on their shoulders, throw the ball all over the lot, and help them win a football game, or else I think this Minnesota offense is in trouble because they have shown they cannot run the football. Coming into the game, Mike, the big difference looks to be the rushing games, and we'll talk about that here momentarily. We'll paint that picture as Grant Mahoney kicks off the second half. Troy Stoudemire and Jay Thomas deep. This is Stoudemire. Iowa State kickoff coverage again strong for the third consecutive time. Let's go down to the sidelines and Stacey Dales. All right, Paul, I just spoke with Paul Rhodes, head coach for the Iowa State Cyclones. I asked him, what are you happy with, unhappy with? He said, very unhappy with the penalties in the first quarter. Clean those up. That's a good thing. I talked to him about his next message, which was very simple. We were not playing within ourselves, not keeping things simple. They turned that around, and he said, my team has played physical football. He said, we're in pretty darn good football shape right now. Paul. Stacy, thank you very much. First and 10, we begin the second half for the 24. Weber looking to pass, and the double move. Great throw. Pretty accurate throw to Brandon Green, but he is out of bounds. Mike, I mentioned a moment ago about the difference in rushing game coming into this one, and Iowa State was averaging 80 yards more on the ground than the Gophers. First half, they have 80 yards more, 99 to 19. And that's a heck of a throw right there, and the foot was down as far as I'm concerned. Whether or not he's got possession, see, the ball came loose late. This is put right on him. The ball is in possession. He loses it at the very end. I think this has got to be replayed by the booth official. Remember, in college football, it doesn't have to be a challenge by the coach. It can be the booth official making the call from upstairs. And that's exactly what's happening. Mikey made the call. Gophers failing to run the football. You thought Weber would come out firing, and he did on that first pass. Good throw and catch to Brandon Green. Right now, the booth taking a look to see if it was indeed a catch for the Gophers. No question the foot was down. The question is whether or not he maintained possession all the way through the catch. There's the catch. The foot was clearly down. Yes, the ruling he did not have possession for long enough. He's got to complete the catch through the ground, and he didn't do that. Got good news and bad news for the Gophers right now, Mike. The bad news, two and a half quarters or two and a half games without an offensive touchdown. They've won all six of their games, though, by coming from behind. Kevin Whaley, the tailback behind Weber on second and ten. 
Toss sweep, nothing to the left, cutting it back. Nate Freer there to make the stop. That's a gain of one. You know, you've talked about Nate Freer three or four times, Paul, making plays. He had a sack in the first half. He's been solid in the run game. You're talking about one of those stout defensive tackles, isn't immensely blessed with speed, but he's tough. He plays hard. He's 6'1", 291-pound kid that's been active all year. And, Paul, he had a forced fumble at Nebraska, and I watched the Colorado tape. The kid had an interception off the spin move. I just like the way he plays. Third nine facing Minnesota. Cyclones rushing only three. Juwan Bennett with the catch, but Fred Guerin there to make the tackle. And on their first possession, Minnesota will go three and out here in the second half. You call the ball. Rush four, drop seven, force him to throw it underneath, and then rally to the football and make a tackle. And that's what they did. They forced the check down, and then two it. Four guys rushing, nothing down the field. There's the check down. Now you got a two on one. Excellent job by Garen taking away the inside. Leonard Johnson taking away the outside. That's great team football. Blake Howden punting to David Sims. He had the interception in the first half. Makes one man miss out to the 30-yard line and approaching the oh, 35. Oh, we got a late hit by 47 in Minnesota. Did they see it? Looks like you might have been the only one to see it there. Ryan right? Coleman took a shot at the end there, man. Iowa State with their first possession of the second half. Coming up, they lead 14-3. Early in the third quarter, the Cyclones leading the Gophers 14-3. We're getting ready for the next phase of our season. That's the NFL draft. Really gets going in Indianapolis at the end of February with the NFL Scouting Combine. Our coverage from February 25th through March 2nd. My second favorite week of the year, Paul, <laughs> after the Senior Bowl. They're my two favorite things, man. You get to see all these top players. It's a lot of fun. First and 10, Iowa State from the 35. Give inside to Alexander Robinson. Tough running over Royston, but Nate Triplett there to throw him back. And speaking of the combine, Nate Triplett will be at the combine. He found out yesterday, along with Simone Lawrence, the other outside linebacker. And Triplett's a kid that's 6'3", 247. And Paul, what I like, nobody talks a whole lot about him. He could be a 3-4 outside linebacker. He's going to test extremely well. He's an unheralded player that has tremendous production. Second on the team with Minnesota. 96 tackles. That's a career high in 2009. Derek Caplet in motion on second and seven. Oh, what Another give to Robinson. How about the hesitation and the burst inside the 40 to the 32-yard line tackled finally by Simone Lawrence. An Iowa State gain of 30. And, Paul, I've been telling you all night, when the tight end stays inside the tackle box, with Dirk Catlett's in there, watch out for the wham block and watch what 84 does. Coming right through into your oh on top of Lee. Campbell, that was just a hellacious game. Cyclones put it on the ground, though. Little difficulty with the exchange from Arnon to the attempted handoff to Robinson. And Minnesota recovers. Anthony Jacobs. Wow. How does that happen? You get a big play like that. You got the tempo you want. Take a look right here at how it happened. Low snap, not handled well, obviously, by Arnod. The snap wasn't bad at all, to be honest with you. That, that's just a lack of concentration by the quarterback. Cyclones only one lost fumble in the previous seven games. Costly run right there, gives it right back to Minnesota. First down and 10 Gophers from the 35. Kevin Whaley, the tailback behind Hazen. Gets it to the left side. Whaley not much going. Tackle made by number 96 for the Iowa State Cyclones. Austin, Austin Albertus. Albertus. And Paul, they come out the next series, I formation, fullback, hazy, and try to get physical and only pick up about two yards. They keep trying to run the football. I give them credit for that, but I really do think it's going to come down to Weber. DeLeon Eskridge, the tailback behind Hazy and Weber. Yeah. Nice decision, good patience there. Marquise Gray, the backup quarterback, slash 
playmaking wide receiver. They got to keep getting the football to him. And I know he's a true freshman, but he's 6'4", 225. He sat right in the hole there, and an excellent job by the quarterback, Weber, looking down the field, checking it down, and picking up a first down. Gain of 16 to Marquise Gray. Brings up first down and 10, now in Iowa State territory at the 47. Right up the middle goes Eskridge. Another first down for the Gophers. They brought pressure off the edge. It was picked up by Hazy, the fullback. Excellent job up front, finally getting a little bit of a gap there. Guard the left guard, pulls, bunders. You pick up the blitzing edge rusher. Eskridge ducks out. Kevin Whaley in. First down and 10. Toss sweep on the misdirection. Fred Guerin sniffs it out, and Chris Lyon cleans it up along with the leading tackler, Jesse Smith. Wow, you no game. You couldn't call it better than you just did, Paul. This direction toss, the discipline of Fred Guerin to not close down on that play, because that's what happens. Is what, what you're hoping is this guy right here. Did you see him immediately go to the outside? Didn't go for the misdirection. He forces the ball back inside, even though he missed the tackle, because that's where his help is. Second down and 10, Minnesota. Hazy the full Eskridge, the tailback. Stoudemire in short motion. Play action, Weber. With time, and just dumps it off to his fullback, Hazy. You know, we talked about the tight end, Nick Tauarnett. And I think they had a chance to take a shot here. Okay, watch him come down across the field. One on one, they clear it out. Boom, take a shot deep. The corner squatted. You had a chance to go over the top. Third down and seven now for Minnesota on the right hash. So far tonight, just seven on third down. Cyclones bring four underneath to McKnight. Balls on the ground. I do believe he was down first. Correct. The connection for 17 yards on third down from Weber to McKnight. It's the another, Gophers with another first down, Mike. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, and a really good throw. Puts it right on the 83. Dejon McKnight. Coverage. A little bit of off coverage. First and 10. Up the middle. Eskridge bouncing it out to the left side. Nice tackle from his corner position, Karen Benton. Now, remember, he's replacing Kennard Banks, the starting corner, one of the leading tacklers on this team. Suspended for disciplinary reasons. They kind of miss the physical presence of Banks, but that was an excellent job from Teron Ben. Loss of one, Minnesota not scored a touchdown in their last six trips to the red zone. Again, no touchdown, no offensive touchdown for Minnesota in the last two and a half games. Where you win and lose, points on the board in the red zone. Weber with time, looking for McKnight, had a chance to grab it and lets it slip through his fingers. You have got to convert those kinds of opportunities. That's a home run right there. You got what you wanted. Your wide receiver, who's 6'3", 200, is wide open. And either he didn't run the right route or he overthrew him. But either way, you've got to take advantage right there. The ball's a little bit high, but there was no inside leverage player. you got to put it on him. That's got to be a touchdown. Adam Weber told us a couple days ago, Mike, about the missed opportunities he felt responsible for, and that's certainly one of them. Brings up third down and 11 from the 17. With time and looking across the middle for Stoudemire, nothing going. Gophers will face fourth down and 11. And that's the face right there of a frustrated quarterback. He knew he missed a shot on second down. He's standing there with his offensive coordinator, Jed Fish, who was with the Denver Broncos a year ago. Understands offensive passing schemes extremely well. Eric Ellistad from 34 yards out. He's a perfect 12 for 12 this season from inside 39 yards. But there is his first miss, pulling it to the left, to his left. So the Golden Gophers have gone seven trips to the red zone without a touchdown, and they also missed the field goal. Cyclones leading 14 to three.
8.38 left in the third quarter. Iowa State, thanks to a couple of late touchdowns in the first half, leading 14-3. Cyclones back on after a missed field goal. First down and 10 from the 20. Derek Catlett in short motion. Give it signed to Alexander Robinson. Patience and a little bit of burst Robinson there at the there. end. Royston there after a gain of four yards, bringing up second down and six, Iowa State. Almost squirted out of there. Same play where in the last series they popped him loose for a big game ball. Alexander Robinson with uh, his efforts tonight now in the top ten all-time at Iowa State. Passing Blaze Bryant. Good back to Jim Walden there in the late 80s and A's. Off the fake. Plenty of time for Arnaud looking for Jake Williams. Would have taken a perfect throw and just a little bit overthrown. Coverage by Ryan Colano for the Gophers. And that's what they do. They try it to lull you to sleep with the inside zone, the outside zone, little wham counters inside. And then they fake that and try to sneak the tight end deep, which they did against Colorado. They did it with Jake Williams against Nebraska on a double move. That's how they make big plays in this offense. It's off their play action. Iowa State right now facing a third down and six on the evening. They are three out of seven on third down. Pretty close to their season third down conversion percentage of 41%. Tight bunch down here. You've got to figure out how you want to handle that if you're in man to man because of picks and rub. Didn't get it off in time. It's going to be delay a game. Dead ball. Delay a game. Number four on the offense. Five yard penalty. Ranks third down. Now that changes things dramatically. Third and 10, third and 11 at this point. Looking over to the sidelines at Tom Herman and Paul Rhodes. Arnaud right now 13 out of 17, 162 yards, one touchdown, and two early interceptions. Comes to safety. Gophers with eight in the box. Full blitz. One on one. Wow. Look at the catch. Marquise Hamilton, number 82, with one hand. And that was man all over the field. The ball was thrown behind him. This is a blitz where you're just going to line up and they're going to go. This is man coverage here and all the way over here. And watch the out route and the throw is to the back, to the wrong shoulder. Pretty good coverage by Collado. Look at that catch. Wow. But not enough. So out comes Michael Brantner for Iowa State. Back deep for Minnesota, Brian Allen, number 81. Brantner gets it out, calling for the fair catch. At 31-yard line. Gophers offense will get another chance. Still trailing 14-3. Fourteen three, Iowa State. Our Stacy Dales is keeping good company on the sidelines. I am Paul. These gentlemen I'm standing with are the reason we're actually here at the Insight Bowl. This is the CEO of Insight Enterprises, Kenneth Lamnick, and to my right is Tim Crown, who is the chairman of the board. And we're all wondering, what the heck is Insight? What do you guys do, Kenneth? Well, we sell information technology products that incorporates and includes hardware, software, and services to end users and business end user customers throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So very large cu customer set that we have. It's a far shot from the sports world. But great, sounds like so. great stuff. And Tim, I have to ask you, you guys have sponsored this now for 12 years. Why do you continue sponsoring this bowl? Well, we absolutely love college football. And this is our headquarters here in Tempe, Arizona. We have over 5,000 employees and family members here. And we just absolutely love college football. And not to mention, they are both former athletes, Paul. Not football players, but uh, hockey players, volleyball players. They know how to get it done in the sports world. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Stacy Dales, thank All you. Right. First down and 10. Give to Eskridge, bouncing it out to the left side, or trying to anyway, but Chris Lyle had other thoughts. I mean, Paul, if we're talking about athletes, Stacy didn't even give herself a pop. I mean, we're, we're talking about maybe one of the best female basketball players in history. 
kidding me? Far Easily far. the most successful athlete on this broadcast team. Uh, no question about it. And Big 12 to boot, you know what I'm saying? Kevin Whaley in at tailback after that loss of one. And Iowa State out rushing Minnesota at this point. 134 to 32. Second down, 11. Minnesota needs to get to the 41 for a first down. Gives to Whaley off to the right side and good tackle there by Davis. Good bounce by Whaley. David Sims on the tackle for Iowa State. Whaley's a 5'9", 179 pound whippet. True freshman. He's kind of one of those change of pace guys, Paul. Not big enough yet to be a pass protection guy, but very, very quick to catch the football also. Duan Bennett, the tailback for Minnesota on third down and four. A choice down. You've got an opportunity. You could run the zone read, you could fake it. Two by one, two wide receivers on one side, one back side. A little roll to the left. Michael O'Connell on the defense. The intended pass from Troy Stoudemire. Cyclone defense holds. Now, my point on sprint is if you're going to hit the short guy, you got to get the ball out of your hand more quickly than that because you give O'Connell a chance to undercut the route. I think he had it early but delivered it too late. Blake Howden on the punt. Minnesota now two for ten on third down. That's the fifth three and out forced by the Iowa State defense. It was David Look at this, wide open. Oh, there. Wide open to Kyle Ferret, deep into Iowa State territory. Wow. Great call and great execution for the special teams for Minnesota. Give Tim Brewster credit and also John Butler, the special teams coach. That's Kyle Therrett, the starting free safety. This is a game where you need to look at him sneak out on the backside. The punter does a great job, Howden, just dropping it out there. He could have hit either one of those guys, Tal Arnett or Therrett. There they go. The release, the deep release. He could have had either one of them. Iowa State caught napping. Nice job by the punt returner, David Sims, of taking on the lead blocker and forcing the ball carrier out of bounds. Excellent chance for the momentum to stay with Minnesota, get more points on the board. Alien Eskridge, the tailback on first and ten. Penalty flags on the play, Mike. They, they got to throw the football. As much as they want to run the ball, it's not working. Paul Rhodes' team has just shut the run down. Some confusion timeout. out there with Adam Weber. Minnesota, that's their first charge timeout. See, he's pointing at the clock. I think there was a problem with the play clock on that, I'm guessing, and it was running down on him, and he called the timeout. Timeout, Minnesota, the Gophers with an excellent chance here. Still trailing by 11. Iowa State leading in the third quarter, 14-3. We're watching Kyle Therrett because uh, he has had quite a night, Mike. Seven tackles, not one, but two interceptions in the first quarter of Austin or not. First one right there. Gave a good field position. The next one, deep Poor throw by Arnaud. And special teams moments ago, 40-yard reception on the fake punt. Tau Arnett leading the way. And you always want to go to, to, to your guys that have got a lot of plays under their belt. He's a two-year starter. He's been around the block. And, of course, he was also involved in the big, in the controversial touchdown for Iowa State at the end of the half where he fell down and was contacted. There was no interference. And Iowa State scored on a Hail Mary. First and ten, Minnesota. Duan Bennett, the lone back behind Adam Weber. Play action. Weber with plenty of time. And a touchdown to his tight end, Nick Tallarnett. And Paul, that's almost the play we diagrammed from last series, right? He said, I thought he had the tight end on the deep cross. They came right back to it. Real good job of play action. He got the corner to bite up. Deep crossing route. Eric Ellistad, 30 out of 30 on extra point attempts. Make it 31 out of 31 and make the score 14 to 10. Iowa State, thanks to the Weber to Tau Arnett hookup. Got ourselves a game once again. 
522 left. Cyclones lead is cut to four. Iowa State still leads, but that lead is now 14 to 10 after the touchdown from Weber. That man right there, Tau Arnett. Started off with great play action, which is going to allow the tight end to release and then come across the field because of the play action. You can see right there the nickel defender is not deep enough, and that's because of the play action fake. Tower net, tremendously athletic tight end, doesn't get enough credit in this offense. And boy, I'll tell you what. Really, Paul, set up by the fake punt. That was the call of the day. And because of the fake punt, we've got ourselves a football game. Nick Towernet with three touchdowns on the season for his career. Back deep, number 19, the freshman for Iowa State, Josh Lenz. But this will be the strong safety, David Sims. Breaking tackles, surges across the 25-yard line, and that's where Austin Arnott and the Cyclone offense will begin. Arnott, 14 out of 18 for 172 yards, one touchdown, the two first-quarter interceptions. He also has 14 carries for 52 yards. The leading rusher is Alexander Robinson, 13 carries for 82 again on this evening, moving into the top 10 all-time for Iowa State. I think if you're Iowa State, you're going to get back into your inside and outside zone game. Instead, they come to the play action looking for Catlett. Triplett on the tackle after the short yardage gain on the pitch and catch from Arnaud to Catlett. Gain of three. Minnesota's got a lot of momentum going. Nice play by Triplett, the outside linebacker. Completed pass, only gains three yards. Second down seven from the third. Clock still moving now inside five minutes in the third quarter. Quickly to Hamilton. Nice tackle by Collado. Gain of four from Arnaud to Marquis Hamilton. And when you've got a soft corner like that, that's an excellent job. That's a run or a pass at the line of scrimmage where the rest of the team is run blocking and he's throwing it out there because he's got a soft corner and a wide receiver with a chance to make a play. Third down and three, Iowa State in third down situations right now, three for eight. Rushing four with time, Arnaud making it look easy. Pitch and catch. To Marquise Hamilton, first down, Iowa State. And just a good read. He, he knew he had two high safeties. It was a zone. Hamilton set, sat down between the linebacker and one of the safeties, and he just drilled it in there. First down and 10, Iowa State from the 40-yard line. That was a gain of six from Arnaud to Hamilton. Not keeping it himself. Nope. Has Robinson open out of the backfield and just overshot it. And he knows it. And another missed opportunity. And at the open ball, we talked about both these quarterbacks missing some throws during the season. I saw him miss a throw against Colorado. And here we're going to get great action. He's going to roll this way. And the throwback to the same person that he faked it to. Great team. It's a tremendous scheme. And Colorado knows that he got at, a little bit out of sorts there in zone coverage, and they missed an opportunity to make a big play. Second and 10, the tight end, Catlett in motion, coming back to his starting position. Inside give to Robinson with room. Breaks the tackle of Collado out near the 50-yard line, a gain of eight yards. That'll bring up third down and short for Iowa State. You know, they go zone, zone, and, and then they come at you with a little bit of a counter look, and what happens is, they're going to bring the guard and the backside and the tight end backside out front. Good job. Clear the lane. Excellent play on second down. Iowa State now four for nine on third down. What they like to call manageable third down situations. Third down and two. Corner blitz. Keep it himself. Fumble. Ball on the ground. Lee Campbell has it. Iowa State actually picked up the corner blitz. Robinson, the tailback, picked it up. I believe.
believe it was the safety, Mike, number three, the transfer from Wisconsin. Made the hit, correct? Kim Royston making the hit. Lee Campbell with the cup with the uh, recovery. Royston, one-on-one -on -one tackle. Textbook. Excellent job. Textbook. Campbell with the football. Iowa State actually picked up the corner blitz and did everything right except an odd put the ball on the ground. So the Gophers did score a touchdown on their last possession. You want Bennett to tail back behind Weber, looking to pass. Oh, boy, is that How about great that? Play. Is a pretty pass. Big hit from David Sims, but Nick Tauarnett has a first down on the Iowa State 30, a gain of 24. We talked about Tauarnett, 6'3, 248, had 35 catches, and he got lit up right there on the seam. And again, I told you, I think they're going to have to throw the football to win this game. Great catch, puts it away, protects mm. against the hit. That was not a defenseless receiver, hence no call. Tremendous job holding on to the football. Iowa State coaches told us a couple nights ago, Mike, that they wanted Nick Tauernet, or pardon me, the Minnesota coaches, said they'd like for him to have ten catches. He now has two. But two in a row, the touchdown. Big one, right? And now the big game down to the 30. I mean, and, and again, off their play-action game, they're setting some things up in the secondary that are really helping him at this time. Iowa State now has four turnovers, two fumbles from Arnaud, and also two interceptions. First and ten, Minnesota from the Iowa State 30. Give off the left side. Breaking back over the middle, tackled by Jesse Smith. That's DeLeon Eskridge for a gain of seven. Inside zone, cut back, excellent job getting north and south. Eskridge out, Kevin Whaley number six in a tailback. Second down and three coming up. If you gotta check the lip, you gotta check it all out after a hit like that. Yeah, most importantly, I don't care about the lip or a little blood in the mouth, that's okay. You, you wanna make sure he's not concussed. Little misdirection pitch to Whaley. He's got plenty of running room. Great hit. Big hit from James Smith, but that's a go for gain of 12 for Kevin Whaley. That's losing contain either a defensive end or linebacker based on whatever the defensive scheme was. They lost contain. Big gain by Kevin Whaley and a good hit at the end of it by James Smith. Tailback now again, number 23, Daly on Eskridge. It's first down and 10 from the 10. Eskridge looking for running room, finds a little, lowers his shoulder inside the five-yard line. And I like what they're doing with their run game now. A little tight bunch, number 85, the backup tight end, Eric Lair, did a nice job securing the edge. And they what they're trying to do is outnumber you. Here they come, Bunders is pulling out. Dom Alford's pulling out. Eric Lair did a nice job at the point of attack. Minnesota looking good right now, Mike, but on the previous three Iowa State turnovers, they failed to convert. Right now they have second and four. Second and three. Tight bunch wide to the field. Going to his right is Weber. Oh, had him. Boy, he had Ben Kuznia open for a moment there, but left it behind him. You get that tight bunch, you're anticipating man coverage down there in the red zone. You're looking for a little rub route, and he did have Guzmia wide open if he put it on him. Another third down situation coming up here for Minnesota. This is a microcosm of Adam Weber's year. He's made some tremendous throws that not a whole lot of college quarterbacks can make, and then he mixes in one where you go, where did that come from? They can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. They'd have to get just inside the one-yard line. Daly on Eskridge, the lone back in this two tight end set. Give to Eskridge, tries to bounce it outside. Nice play by 55, the defensive end, Chris Lyle. Also, Teron Benton forcing the football back inside from the corner position so that Lyle can make the play. See 22 right here. Watch what he does. He beats the block, forces it back inside into the hands of Christopher Lyle. You can't allow the bounce to get outside your containment. Eric Ellistad, one for two on the night. Earlier, he made one from 36. 
Even the second half missed from 34. Looks like they're going to take a penalty. They want a better angle. The ball's on the left hash, so if you, if you take the penalty, you get the better angle. And he's going to decline it, which is his right to do so. Wise move. <laughs> a little chess little match. Mouse. Yeah, a little chess match here. And how funny would it be if Brewster turned around and went for it? <laughs> Minnesota did convert on the uh, fake punt a little earlier in the second half, Mike. Correct. And, and it's just this is all about the angle. It's, a, it's like an extra point, but it's a severe angle. 21 yards out. Eight for eight he is from this distance. And go ahead and make it nine for nine. Fourteen, thirteen. Now Iowa State Super Bowl week is quickly approaching here at NFL Network. February one through February seventh, live from South Florida. More than one hundred hours of coverage in all one hundred, Mike, in HD. Everything but the game. February first through February seventh in South Florida. As we get you ready for the Super Bowl, you going to make a prediction for the Super Bowl, Mike? Who do you like? When, when two teams get there, I'll talk to you. <laughs> Wait, kid me? Huh? <laughs> that's, a, that's a fair question. We haven't, even got, we, haven't, we haven't even declared the playoff teams yet. Baltimore Ravens could end up there, and they're 8-7 and seven right now. Some people are still picking Super Bowl participants, Mike. Some people don't know what they're talking about. And you don't want to be one of those and people. And I don't want to be one of those people. <laughs> Coach Hoskins, my middle name. We reminded you earlier that Minnesota, in all six of their victories, or in all six of its victories, came from behind. So they were trailing 14-3. to And all four of those comebacks did occur in the fourth quarter. David Sims from the five. A little bit across the 30. Triplett got a piece there, or it could have been a big, big return. Tackle for Minnesota made by Jay Thomas, the running back. 14 seconds left in the third quarter. Setting ourselves up, Mike, for a pretty good finish here. Cyclones leading by one, 14-13. Austin or not. A lot of great things today, Mike, but also the four turnovers. We talked in the open about both quarterbacks and their inconsistencies. They play at an extremely high level and then make a bad decision or a bad throw, and it, it kind of frustrates them. Comes pressure. Here they come. Give to Robinson. Gophers plug it up. Big number 99. Garrett Brown, 89 is Barrett Moen. That's going to do it for the first three quarters. Going to be an exciting finish here in Tempe. Iowa State leading by one, 14-13. About five blocks away from Sun Devil Stadium is where you'll find Mill Avenue, of which Mike Mayock is now the unofficial mayor after the last two nights. I think I had a partner out there, Mr. Burmeister. <laughs> Looking forward to the Doobie Brothers playing downtown Tempe later this evening. You see how we got to 14-13 as we begin the fourth quarter here at Sun Devil Stadium. Cyclones leading by one, now with second down and nine from their own 34-yard line. Austin or not, two rushes in that third quarter for four yards. He also had two fumbles. Roll to his left, doesn't like what he sees, keeps it himself. Searching for open room, and he's got it. Kim Royston with the tackle on the 40-yard line. That's a gain of six after a lot of hesitation and finally seeing some room. Yeah, he hesitated because Kyle Therrett did a great job of un running under Darius Dark. So he wanted on the e outside on the edge. And when he didn't have him, he's looking right here. There goes Therrett running under the route. It's not there anymore. But look at the athletic ability to cut back and turn nothing into something. Third down and three. Iowa State dictating to that Minnesota defense, making them hurry up. And I'm looking to pass, and that's batted in the air, incomplete. They had a blitz off the backside, 
Ferret peeled with the running back on the front side. Just really good team defense on third and about three. So Michael Brantner comes on. 200-pound senior from Assumption High School. Four-year starter. Averaging 41 yards per pump this season. Almost. Almost. Brian Allen backs away. The ball still rolling inside the 15-yard line. In between the 14 and the 15, that is where the Gophers will take over. Now trailing by just one. Almost coming up with the block. Grant, a little slip, but did get it away. We're back after this. 46 yard punt. Cyclones on top by one. Stacy Dale's on the sideline with the Gophers leading receiver and the injured Eric Decker. He is the leading receiver for this uh, team, all time leader in receptions, Eric. Obviously, the Liz Franck injury has been detrimental to your season. Ronnie Brown from the Dolphins, that ended his season this year. Dwight Freeney, where are you at right now with this procedure and, and the surgery that's ahead? I'm eight weeks in. Um, I got the crutches a couple weeks ago. Feeling good. You know, I'm making progress. I'm uh, getting out of the boot a little bit, walking around, doing a lot of therapy to strengthen my ankle again, get the flexibility back in my toe. And, um, you know, it's just teaching me a lot about myself. And I've, I've enjoyed kind of this experience to step back and help coach a little bit and just help the guys grow. So. It's tough to end your career like that, but, you know, that's, things happen like that, and you just got to take it as it is. You segued me. What have you given to some of these young receivers on this team as you guys have forged through this 6-6 six and six season? Right. Just to try to instill some confidence. You know, they are young. Uh, they don't have much experience. So just kind of kind of give them what I learned through my experience, and that's watching tape, uh, on, on the field stuff, how to run a certain route, how to block. Mm -hmm. Sounds exciting right now. But uh, just, just little things that they can take away and become a better player. How did they get this offense to come alive here in the second? I think, you know, once we got the momentum, Adam's doing a great job uh, throwing the ball around. Offensive line's obviously blocking great for him, and we're making plays at the receiver position, tight end position. That's all you can ask for. Well, our guy up there in the booth, Mike Mayock, has great things to say about you. We hope to see you at the next level. We expect to see you there. I appreciate that. Thanks for your time. Guys. Mike, I think that was a throw to you. Bottom line is he's staying out here in Phoenix to, to rehab and train. He won't be available for the combine. Hopefully he'll be able to run at his pro day. But regardless, worst case, he's a second-round pick. Play action to Whaley on second and nine. There's a little pitch and catch. That's what I'm talking about. From Paul. Weber to McKnight. When, when you talk about a big time throw, that's what that was. It needs arm strength, it needs timing, and it needs accuracy. He put all three of those together on the same play. There's the route. He's going to come from the far hash off play action. Look at this. This is a deep route across the field. He put it right on him. And there are few quarterbacks around the country that can execute it that well. DeJean McKnight had a big evening. Now six catches for 105 yards. First and 10 for the 31. Play action fake to DeJuan Bennett. Wants to come back that way. Patrick Neal makes him change his mind. And here he goes. Out close to a Minnesota first down. Jesse Smith chases him out of bounds. But that was a... Big pickup for Minnesota, close to another first down. They tried to take a deep shot on a throwback, and the discipline of the Iowa State defense was there. Guerin, the linebacker, was running with it. A corner was running with it. So what happens? The quarterback pulls the ball down and, again, makes a first down out of nothing. Second down and one, actually, Mike. Awfully close to a first down. No, no, they just moved it. They did just move it. Marquise Gray in at quarterback. Tries to dump it off inside to his tight end, Nick Towernet. Nice play, breaking it up by the Cyclones' leading tackler, Jesse Smith. Now, I think that's one where the athletic Gray could have forced the corner a little bit harder. Use his athletic ability, if it wasn't there, take off. Second down, 10 upcoming. Mike, to be honest, I haven't seen Gray as much as, as I, I thought we would tonight as a receiver and also as a quarterback. And he made a play as a receiver early in the game. I thought we were going to see a lot of him, but I think the emergence of, of Dejon McKnight as a big play guy, Paul, he had 10 catches coming into the game. Already over 100 yards. Second and 10, Stoudemire in short motion. Give inside to Eskridge, cuts it back, but there to cut him off. Number 38 for the Cyclones, that's Roosevelt Magic back up defensive end. Bunders, the left guard, pulled. 
Nice cut back, but, but Magic stayed home. And these are two, I really am impressed by how well coached these teams are. Defensive coordinator, Wally Burnham, of course, would have been in since South Florida, Florida State. They're really well coached. Third down and six. Third down has not been good to Minnesota so far. Just two out of 11. Yeah. Intended you know, for Troy Stoudemire, Mike, obviously incomplete. And he saw everything but didn't execute the throw. It was a blitz off the edge. They ran the hitch route at the first down marker, and he didn't get him. Okay, here comes the nickel. You've got it. All you've got to do is find a way, Adam, to get the ball out there because he's wide open at the sticks. So here he just made a throw ball that took my breath away on, on the deep out across the hash. And I know there was pressure on that throw, but you've got to make it. It's third down, critical down. Blake Howden punting to David Sims, just lets it block, uh, lets it bounce out of bounds. And that is where they will take over. They being the Iowa State Cyclones. We're back after this. Iowa State does still lead 14 to 13, but it's not because of the last four possessions. Paul Rhodes has watched his offense go a couple of punts, a couple of turnovers. They just lead by one. Alexander Robinson off the right side. Likes what he sees. Nate Triplett there for the tackle. But that's a Cyclone first down after a gain of 12. Nice cut by Robinson, but a poor job of contained by Kim Royston. The safety. Robinson now over 100 yards for the evening. That's his sixth 100-yard game of the year. And Paul, they're going quick tempo again, I believe. Up oh, and go back to the side. Remember, they kick-started this thing in the second quarter with their jet tempo. It'd be interesting to see if they try and do that again. Ninth 100-yard game of the career for Mr. Robinson. Alexander Robinson again with the carry, short gain of three. Tackle by number 96. You know, it was It'll be second down and seven for the Cyclones. Second and seven at the 25. Bravo! 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 Looking over to the offensive coordinator, Tom Herman. Waiting for the night. Catman in that danger zone right there, the alert zone. Watch out for a land block. Little option has Robinson, but keeps it himself right at the first down sticks. Let's go to the sidelines. Stacy Dales. Well, Paul had a chance to talk to Robinson a couple days ago. I asked him about the significance of this game. He said, for me personally, I'm from Minnesota. This has a lot of meaning. He was recruited by then-coach Glenn Mason. They wanted him as a DB, though, guys. Iowa State wanted him as the running back. And look what he's done for the Cyclones in his career, guys. Pretty impressive, Stacey. You know, one of the things is we talk with Paul Rhodes about how you recruit at Iowa State. you got to find kids that fall through the cracks, and that's one way you do it. A kid that has his heart set on being a running back, give him that opportunity. Get him in your program. First and 10, Iowa State from the 32. This time he gives it to Robinson, and he's got room. And another Iowa State first down, making Royston and miss out to the midfield stripe. A gain of 17 yards. Option football puts such a stress on a defense. It's all about discipline. That time, Simone Lawrence makes a big hit on the quarterback, yet he is able to deal it out for Robinson. There's nobody on pitch. So quarterback was taken care of. Pitch was not. Good hustle by Kirksey at the end of the play to bring him down. Robinson now 18 carries for 123 yards. First time the Cyclones have had something going here, really, since early in that third quarter. Going to have the tight end offsides. Put the Cyclones at first and 15. Dead ball. Ball start. 88. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Range first down. 88 is Colin Franklin. You know, they've got 42 receptions this year coming into the game from the tight end position. Catlett at 27, Franklin had 15. And that's what they do offensively here. They gotta speed you a little bit in order to try and make plays. And the tight ends are very prominent in the
Bump it to the right, back to the left, screen to Robinson. He has another Cyclone first down, dragging Kim Royston to the 30. Did the ball come out? I do not believe he was whistled down. Referees are talking about it, Paul. Was he ever ruled down? Like, this is where I like when the referees get everybody away. There has not been a determination made. Now, I love the scheme of this play because look which way we're looking, and then we're going to come back late over here. It gives your offensive lineman a chance to get out front. It gives the defense a chance to commit the other way. And, Paul, it looks like the preliminary read is going to be football. Go here. Watch the strip right here Kim by Kim Royston as he does everything he can to pull the football free. It looked to me like the first thing that hit was the crown of the helmet. And from that angle, I can't tell whether or not the ball was out. But let's face it, Royston was working that the whole way. That was awfully close. And again, remember, in college football, each head coach is entitled to one challenge, which can become two if that coach is successful. They're going to consider this one and take a look. Right now, it's 14-13. Iowa State. Now, the ruling on the field a moment ago was that Alexander Robinson did put the ball on the ground after a big gain on the screen pass, but after taking a few looks slow motion, Mike, it, it looks like he was down, and they are taking another look right now. But remember, you've got to up overturn the original call, which is fumble. Here, the first thing that hits is helmet, right there. Mm. Now, I don't know if the ball out or not. I, I, don't, I think it looks to me like he has possession when the helmet hits which would be an overturn of the call on the field indisputable evidence it's got to be key. indisputable visual evidence and again the call on the field is fumble the helmet hits the ball comes out i want to say he had possession but i'm not sure it's indisputable i think he had possession I think Paul Rhodes is with you. I know where Paul is. Robinson having a big night. 18 carries for 123 yards. I give Royston a lot of credit. He rode that thing for six, seven yards trying to rip it's it good out. Effort. Yes, yeah. it was. Iowa State already with four turnovers on the evening. A couple of interceptions from Austin or not. He's also lost two fumbles. This is obviously a huge play. Look where the football is. 35-yard line. After further review, it was determined that the runner was down both by his helmet and his shoulder. Therefore, the ball will be Iowa State ball, first and ten at the 30-yard line. That's that's kind of what it looked like. It looked like that, exactly. It did look like that. Whether or not, to me, it was indisputable, I don't know. But the helmet and shoulder pads did hit the ground, and then we saw the ball pop loose. 26-yard gain, now first down and 10 Iowa State in Minnesota territory at the 30-yard line. Marquise Hamilton, the receiver to his left, the short side of the field. Coming from the top side. Here Preston. comes Campbell. And right into the teeth of that blitz mic. Yeah, Simone Lawrence and Campbell. Good call by the coordinator Kevin Cosgrove. See, loading up the left side. Yep, they're coming off the Simone Lawrence comes off it late. The block by Catlett. No game, second down ten. This time they've been triplet from the other side. Quick release. Jake Williams can't hold on. And there's another one where you got a chance to make a play. Arnott knows that. Jake Williams running a hitch. Open. Put it on him. Jake Williams right now the leading receiver for Iowa State. Five catches for 78 yards. That would have been number six. And the protection was there against the soft corner. Overthrown clearly. Marcus Sherrill's the corner there. Third down and ten, Iowa State. Here they come. This is the pressure down. 
Little roll to the right and no chance. Cal Ferret there. Also DL Wilhite. Aggressive stance there by Minnesota, bringing the blitz two of the last three plays. And Wilhite is a freshman that I think has got more pass rushing potential than anybody on this Minnesota defense. They bring him in in pass rush situations, and the kid's done a great job. And that hurts for Iowa State, Mike, because now they're out of field goal exactly. range. He had, exactly, Paul. He needed to throw that football away despite the pressure. Michael Brantner to punt. He has 21 inside the 20 on the season. It has to oh. go. <laughs> and that's 22. Ophers going to have to go a long, long way to move ahead. 99 to be exact. Iowa State leading 14 to 13 over Minnesota. Michael Brandler just put the Gophers in a bad spot. Got to go 99 yards. That's the trophy that would be theirs. I'm not sure about that spot. I thought he touched it about the two-yard line. Inside the one. Duan Bennett, the tailback, but Weber looking to pass. There you go. Yep. Dejon McKnight continuing his big night. Over 100 yards. That's a gain of 19. That's the throw we missed from the goal line in the red zone a couple series ago. A little skinny post. Steps into it. Should be delivered at about 18 or 19 yards. And the six foot three, 200 pound McKnight comes down. How, what, how many catches does he have, Paul? McKnight right now, seven catches for a buck 24. Had 10 on the entire season. You're seeing the birth of a new player that's going to be a big time guy at Minnesota. Now Weber has a little bit of room, first and 10 from the 20. With time, misfires. Looking for Stoudemire. It'll be second down and 10. Put it on him on the back shoulder with a lot of heat on it. Stoudemire wasn't ready with the hands. Take a look at how the quarterbacks are performing tonight. Different types of quarterbacks. Weber likes to throw a little more than Arnaud. Each one of them had effective. They've had their moments, both good and bad, Paul. Mm -hmm. And that's what we told people coming into the game. And, you know, the tape doesn't lie. They're both smart, tough kids who do a lot of good things. And I think they'll become even better quarterbacks next year. Second down 10 for Weber from his own 20-yard line. Some confusion right now. Marquise Gray in at quarterback, and Weber lined up the receiver on the right. Clock ticking down. Not going to get it off. Nope. Timeout. Minnesota. Marquise Gray, the freshman quarterback. They're very high on his potential. And wanted to sprinkle this him in under center. Get him snaps a quarterback and also wide receiver tonight. Yeah, Tim Brewster tells us that, that he's got a big future. And he'll push Weber this spring, but he'll also play some wide receiver. He's such such a great athlete. And, you know, we, we hung out with Brewster for a while, and I had a great conversation with him. And his son, Nolan, is a defensive back at Texas. Remember, Tim Brewster coached with Mac Brown at North Carolina and Texas. His son is a soft defensive back and will play for a national championship next week against the University of Alabama and he and I had a great time because my son just won a national championship at the 1AA level with Villanova. They're both safeties. We compared notes and good for Tim. He's got a chance to go to the national championship in Calgate, have a beer and hang out. I hope you have fun. Good luck to your son. Marquise Ray in at quarterback still. Fakes the incident. Hit himself. Has room and he's got some speed. Patrick Neal giving chase. He and Leonard Johnson finally bring Gray down out near the 50-yard line, that's a gain of 28 for the freshman Marquise Gray. And we've been talking about him all day, day being a game-breaker. No matter where you line him up, he's a game-breaker. There's the key block right there on the middle linebacker. Smith, he breaks a tackle about the 8-yard mark, protects the football. Whether you line him up at quarterback, wildcat, or wide receiver, this cat is a playmaker. And that's what it's all about at 6'4", 225. Now it's first down and 10, Minnesota. Weber back in at quarterback. Whaley in at tailback. Good run, good tackle again by Leonard Johnson. Having an active series. That's a gain of eight. As the Gophers are now in Cyclone territory. Little zone right back at Iowa State. Nice job on the cutback by Whaley. 
That big offensive line got some movement. They ran their zone tracks. They went on that 45-degree angle. They got some movement, and the kid cut it back and crossed the green. Nice job. Inside six minutes now, the fullback Hazy behind Weber. Eskridge behind Hazy. Double tight fullback. Heavy run and play action formation. Eskridge off the left side. Cuts it back. Nate Freer from his interior defensive line position making the tackle. That's a gain of four yards. Nate Freer is a good football player, and I'm telling you, nobody talks about him. He's your kind of guy. Hustle guy, effort guy. No talent, I'm saying, like me. I didn't. That's what you're saying, huh? You can hustle <laughs> and still have talent. This, this kid, I'm telling you, you put the tape on and nobody talks about him, and he shows up everywhere. And, Paul, you're exactly right. It's because he's a hustle guy. And it, it's not a sin to get blocked, but it is a sin to stay blocked. And that kid never stays blocked. Duan Bennett, the tailback, but Weber looking to pass. Finds him out of the backfield. A little bit across the 40-yard line. Keeps it inbounds. Nice job of staying in. And Jesse Smith has to ride him out of bounds after another go for first down. Gain of 12. And I really believe that the defense relaxed because they thought he was going to go out of bounds. And he took advantage of that. We were told he's the best receiver amongst all of the running backs in this group. You're going to get these two guys running them off, and we're just going to get a little pattern right there on the edge. He fumbles the ball a little bit, catching if it runs through two, three tackles, stays on his feet. Middle linebacker Jesse Smith has to make the play. That's a great individual effort. He had 14 catches coming into this game. He remains in the backfield. Play action. Weber, though, just going to dump it off to the backup tight end, Eric Lair, and another go for first down. Benton with a tackle this time, but Minnesota is now inside the Iowa State 20. And Lair, a converted wide receiver. He's not yet ready to be a blocker at this level, but they sneak him in because they want to get the football in his hands. He's 6'3", 230-pound sophomore, and when he starts to put some weight on and get bigger and stronger, he's already got the vertical game. He's got to pick up the physical part of the game. Adam Weber now 18 out of 32 as he splits out wide. Marquise Ray in at quarterback from first and 10 from the Cyclone 17. And a Wildcat, you've got it. Now you've got to account for him. Makes the inside give. Right back up the middle. Puts the on the ground. Uh -oh. And Taron Benton has it. Wow. Stoudemire saved the game right there with a the tackle. Wow. And we talk about Paul guys making big plays. But you've got to protect the football. And that's a freshman getting excited, wanting to make a play. Tim Brewster, his credit crowd, he says, hey, you're going to win this football game for us. Hey, keep your head. Don't, don't lose it. You fake the jet sweep, and then it's a quarterback keep. Now, when you make this cut, mm. what happened? It looked like it hit his own guy. Yeah. Backed into him. Take a look at it here one more time. When he makes the cut, the ball's, look at it, it's away from his body. gets poked loose by Jesse I Smith. I believe Jesse Smith got, a, got yep. a little punch on it. Yes, he did. Now Alexander Robinson off the left side. Now inside of four minutes, that's a gain of three. Robinson with 20 carries, 126 yards. We said coming in, a strength for Iowa State was the running game. Now they're going to have a chance to really flex that muscle to pick up yards and keep the clock moving. And, Paul, this is a heck of a football game, and we talked all week about how th these teams are almost mirror images of themselves given the fact that the type of athlete they have on the edges how well coached they are how tough and disciplined they are and i think that's what we've seen today minnesota with just one timeout left second and seven from the 24. but the corner's coming and he is nice read throws it hot to jake williams nice tackle by royston Stops him short of a first down, but the clock continues to move after a gain of five from Arnaud to Williams. And Jake Williams did a great job telling his quarterback. He said he waved and screamed that Collado was going to go on a corner blitz. Collado did go, and from that point, they made the correct read. Arnaud immediately got it out to Jake Williams, and they pick up several yards on a good read off the corner blitz. Third down and two, Iowa State. The Cyclones four for 12. One out of three in converting third downs. Confusion. Minnesota not sure where to line up. Simone Lawrence. Arnaud keeps it, and that's a first down. And that confusion hurt them. Gain of seven. If we can get a look at this prior to the snap again, just the way it happened, Simone Lawrence was trying to get one of the other linebackers to kick over. Look at them. 
And right there is the low block on Therrett. Alexander Robinson with a nice block. And when you when your quarterback becomes part of the run game, you can outgap the defense, and that's what happened there. The extra guy in the run game, really good block on Kyle Therrett, who's trying to come up in support and a key first down. Robinson and Arnaud have combined for 39 carries and 194 yards. Robinson around the right side, pushing that total over 200 yards and pushing the Cyclones out close to the 50 for an Iowa State first down. That was all about Alexander Robinson. Great bounce. Beat Royster to the outside. Royston to the outside. 21 carries for 138 yards. Coming into this one, third in the Big 12 at 96.2. So we expected him to be good. He's been a little bit better. And he's healthy again, Paul. You know, he missed Nebraska when they upset Nebraska in Lincoln. He missed half of the Kansas State game. 15 practices, he's healthy, and this is their power look right now. Again, Minnesota with only one timeout left to stop the clock. That's Robinson again up the middle, got one yard. Huge, huge couple first downs right there, Paul, after the fumble. Minnesota uses their final timeouts. 137 left. Iowa State with the ball and a one-point lead. Tell you what, Mike, growing up in the Midwest, not at all surprised to see the emotions out there tonight between the Big Ten and the Big 12, the Cyclones and the Gophers. Iowa State leading late 14 to 13, a buck 37 laps. Playing for that trophy the last time Iowa State was in this city for a bowl game. They won, beating Pittsburgh. And Paul Rhodes, what staff was Paul Rhodes on in that game? He right? was on the other sideline. Exactly. Arnaud keeps it himself across the midfield stripe, running over Collado. You know, Paul, of six, Mike. we mentioned Paul Rhodes, and I think it's a, an appropriate time to just kind of, you know, dot the I here. Paul Rhodes came back. He was on the staff with McCarney from 95 to 99. He told us with emotion yesterday how difficult it was to be on that Pittsburgh sideline playing against the kids he recruited. And, Paul, you know better. I like to hear from you. You're, you're an Iowa guy. I have found that the whole Iowa football thing is unbelievable. I'm amazed at how many people are here today, and I'm amazed at, at, at how seriously they take it in that state, and I think he's the perfect fit for what they're doing. Take a look at this play first here. Austin Arnott across. Picking up another first down, a huge pickup for the Iowa State side. Jones, Mike, and talking about what Paul Rhodes has meant to the program, responding to your comment. I think he's a wonderful fit because this is where he wants to be. He doesn't want to be at Iowa State, then move on somewhere else. This is home for him. He loves the Cyclones. He can hardly talk about the program without tearing up, and that's the kind of person they need. And you talked about the fans here. Yeah. Inside Bowl interested in Iowa State because they knew they'd bring thousands. And I bet for every one Minnesota fan we saw here this week, we probably saw five or six Iowa State fans. I think you're right. And I also love the way he, he picked his coordinators. You know, on, on offense, he gets Tom Herman, and he gets him away from Rice. And remember Rice last year? There's the first down. And that's going to do it. That does it. Coach knows it. But he, he goes out and gets Tom Herman, a very young coach from Rice, who was lighting up the scoreboards in a spread offense, throwing the football with Jarrett Dillard and Casey and all those guys. And to his credit, Herman comes here and understands he doesn't have that kind of player. So what's he do? He adapts the spread to the run game. And that's why they're winning football games. They're going to finish 7-6. and six. He's going to get a Gatorade thing real soon. <laughs> Take a look behind him, which is pretty cool. And think about, think about where Paul Rhodes was a year ago right now, Mike. He had the job about a week and a half. He had a team with 10 consecutive losses. A lot of players... We probably didn't trust the coach out. Yep. And now he's celebrating a bowl victory. <laughs> Paul, he had trouble not tearing up to, to people he doesn't know very well in our meeting yesterday when we talked about what it meant to him to be the head coach of, of one of the two state universities from where he grew up. I mean, it's just a great story, and I'm very happy for him. Paul Rhodes and the Iowa State Cyclones inside bowl champions after a 14 to 13 behind victory against the Gophers. Iowa State gets the call this season, a winning one at seven and six. The Gophers will finish at six and seven. Mike, it was great to spend time with you, Mike Mayock. Thank you very much.
is also a big thanks to Stacy Dales and to Dave Frederick and everyone working so hard in the truck. So long from Tempe, 1413 Iowa State. Let's go to Alex Flanagan in Los Angeles. Let's go get that